Hey, y'all. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, kick it off, maybe. Um, love y'all. Uh, this is a, a real opportunity. I'm super grateful for this uh, for this time. I want to I want to just shout out Scott Woods uh, really quickly for just giving us this opportunity and this platform. Yo, I um, I miss the stage. I really, really, really miss performing. I miss being in front of people. I miss the energy. Um, but it's such a great opportunity to have a space and a platform like this one to be able to just kind of share your work. Um, I also want to shout out my shirt. I don't know if y'all see this Wakanda Forever shirt. Um, we lost a true hero, a true king um, in chat with Bozeman. But I want to thank um, Tiffany Smith. Um, okay, I think I'm getting a notice saying that it's not public. So let me see if I can make this public real quick. Um, give me two seconds, two, two seconds, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Give me two seconds. Hope y'all are hanging in there. Hang in there with me, hang in there with me. Bow. Okay, cool. It should be public now. Hopefully it is. Um, if it's not, definitely message me again and let me know that it's not. Um, so hopefully everybody is cool, doing all right, that you can hear me. Okay, good. I did it. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, hey, so yeah, shout out to Scott um, for this opportunity, this platform. Um, there's some amazing artists, some incredible artists that uh, are going to be coming up throughout this time, throughout this session. Um, yeah, I've been going through it, y'all. It's been it's been a wild time. We've been lost a lot of people, um, and I know I talked a little bit about you know I brought up chat with Bozeman um, earlier, uh, but I wanted to shout out my shirt, Wakanda Forever. So shout out to Tiffany Smith and uh, Nicole Burton who put together a package a while ago um, when when Black Panther came out, and they put together. Um, you got a free shirt and well you didn't get a free shirt it wasn't free but you got a shirt along with some jewelry if you decided to purchase the the package and i did um i also got on my uh you can't really see my my kente pants right here but um i just got to show them off real quick you can't really see them but just know that they're there and in support of of everything that's going on so i'm gonna do some poems and uh i i'm actually just gonna do the poems that i feel like i need um, I think sometimes we, I think we always think that we're writing for other people and, and we are, but I'm also writing for the healing that I need. And um, so a lot of those poems will be that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this set off um, with what I consider a prayer. The sounded base of faith be holy. If this be holy ground, then the water on which I stood choked the sand out of me. I believed in galaxy, became burning night star, fell, credited us on elbows, kneecaps of prayer promises, my testimony. Came warped in the guitar of my mother's casket, my father's brain chest, bent into crucifix, they called me oak, as if I bloomed from sacrifice. Even those demons knew me by name. I was breaking chains of generational curses, choking voices, butterfly trapped in the spider web of my throat, my spine was ladder. My dreams were reaching towards a more I didn't yet know. I swallowed balloon like hot air, resurrected Directed into ball of fire, delivered from fire. The line between artistic and anointing, I walked on water in the belly of the waves, shed my scales, found I was slave to my own body. Silence can be so loud, loud is often all I know of silence. My soul is of percussion, I am rhythm. Saxophone into trumpet, bass grounded of taste, surrounded by sound. But can I hear God's voice in the base of my own faith? I said, can I hear God's voice in the base of my own faith? So often, can I hear God's voice trapped inside the base of my own faith? All right. I'm gonna move right into this poem. I really wanted this set to be a lot about um, just honor and kind of honoring um, our blackness and honoring really the women in my family. I wanna give a shout out to Kim Braswell uh, yesterday who just did this incredible set. I hope that you were able to catch it. Um, but if you want, if you didn't get to catch it, I think it's on her page and it's still on my page, I think. But um, she was able to really honor the, the generations of women in her family. She had her mother present in addition to um, her, her daughters. And so I was able to, um, I was able to witness that 
And what I wanted to do was to be able to honor the women in my family as well. So you'll hear a lot of pieces that kind of float in about that. Um, this is Black Women Repetition. Black woman college degree, black woman masters, black woman student loans, black woman loaned her life over to student students, black woman, woman full-time job, single black woman over 30, single black woman, 30? Black woman world calls bitter, black woman bitten angry, black, black woman bitter, black angry broke, is she the only thing broken? Let's talk about war, let's talk about Vietnam, men coming home limbless, agent orange where black soul should be, let's talk about fathers, daddy didn't come home, black woman got daddy issues, black woman, daddy issues, black woman 30 still dealing with daddy issues, black woman nurse, black man, black father, black boy too afraid of his own insecurities, black woman, black hole, black woman, not whole, black woman, black woman, you are more than just a hole, your thighs uphold, woman of black, black woman, you are not always the night. You are not always black and blue, black woman, not Jonah. Black boy, are you Jonah? What do you do when there's fear inside you the size of a whale's body? Black woman, whale. Black woman, travail for black man. Black woman, pray. Black woman, pray. Black woman, don't be another man's prey. Oh, she swim. Black woman, float. Woman, water. Black woman, your face not always an aquarium's explosion. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to do this poem. And like I said, I really want to honor um, the women in my family. Uh, my aunt said that she was going to watch. She always says that um, I don't write poems about her. But what she doesn't know is like she shows up in so many of my poems. So um, this poem is titled Give Auntie a Break. Her backbone low. Shaved to ground, almost into clay, almost into dust. Return back a woman and only smoke falls into a mouth. Halos of fire encase her like a tomb. She remembers she owes nothing to no one. Paid her dues to everyone's tears. Opened up her body like a house and no one ever had to pay rent. It is here. She remembers. Took your behind in when mommy died and daddy said no more. Clothed you in winter as the sun scraped tomorrow from your spine, made sure you graduated on time and never missed a meal. Couldn't keep you from all the funerals, but held your hand through every service. Here, you can collapse into stone. Send prayers for those who don't know how to call on God. Call on God like your auntie's life depends on it. She called on God when your life almost didn't make it. So when she calls, Right before the street lights go out, even if there are nine cities between you, even if you are almost in your Jesus year and sleeping next to your lover's protection of a body, still answer her, still call her back, still send her kisses in your throat and watch the butterflies return from her mouth. Shout into a song, sing a praise to God in the key of her mouth. She is your mother's daughter, your grandmother's baby girl, held the world in her hands and tossed it all to the wind to cradle you safe in her palms. Breathe your voice through the phone for her and let her know you made it home safe tonight all right um my sister is not watching but um i am going to read this poem it is for my sister um so when the when the pandemic hit and we were all quarantined what i did was i wanted to make sure that i stayed in a creative space so i i reached out to some women and asked them to kind of hold me accountable and ask if i could hold them accountable to really challenge ourselves to write a poem a day and so um so that's what we did so some of the poems that you'll hear came out of that space so when my mother passed um I was, we lived in uh, like a two story house in Youngstown. And I was, for some reason, even though I was 15 years old, I was nervous to go upstairs, like to the bathroom by myself. It's strange how trauma like does things to your mind and your body, but I don't know what I was fearful of. I think it was just the lack of her presence in the home. And so I wrote this poem, this for my sister. And it is about me really just kind of being afraid to go upstairs and go to the bathroom by myself. So um, for my sister. After my mother died, I was afraid to go to the bathroom by myself, to walk upstairs alone in a cold, dark house, a fossil of a home. I thought it was a dream. Clung to my sister as if I came from her. We slept on the couch together that night. After the long drive home from the hospital, my father hugged us. We all hugged. We all collapsed together on the floor. It was December. For years, it felt as if every month was December. My sister stayed with me, told me she was sorry that it was not a dream, that she wished it was, that she wished she could tell me that it was, that we would wake up the next morning to the sounds of my mother clanking the dishes in the sink, burning the bacon on the stove, the singe of smoke clouding the kitchen walls. After she passed, 
Every room was a cloud of smoke. Every memory, a burning kitchen. Every moment, a fear roaring at me, paralyzing me from walking up the stairs, from using the bathroom by myself. My sister, the sweet, gentle soul that she is, took my 15-year-old hand, walked with me up the stairs, and stood outside the doorway of the bathroom. She could care less about how old I was. She could care less about how old I am now. She is still my guard. She clings to me as if she came from me, as if she gave birth to me. Even though five years span between us entering the earth, she became the earth for me. She fought the ghost I could not see, swallowed the pain I could not carry, packaged her own pain, stored it until it was time to release the rainfall. She became the stairs and the hallway, the bathroom door and the clouded wall, tucked the dark house in my every fear into her throat, her every prayer, a loud scream. All right. It is, uh, it's like, you know, it's strange when you can't really like interact with people or feel the energy from people, but I hope that y'all are cool and, and still rocking with me. Um, I'm going to do this poem that I think really honors my, um, my grandmother who passed. Um, yeah, so I feel like I get a lot from her and I started with this kind of song that was like a, so, something that we sang when I was kids. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. There is a piano that sits inside Union Baptist Church on the north side of Youngstown, Ohio, gold plated with my grandmother's name etched into the front frame, Lonnie Bell, music from the heavens, voice from the Lord himself. What a mighty God we serve. Growing up, going to church was not an option. White tights, fluffy socks, and a dress, always a dress, forced to always do something. Choir, usher board plays, vacation Bible school, you name it, I did it. Heaven and earth adore him. Never flocked to singing, but the keys were my first language. Before I knew the notes, I could hear them moving through my body like blood, as if my grandmother herself came to plant music into my palms. Angels bow before him. My father knew all the hymns on guitar or the keys, bought me a piano, an organ, a keyboard, and a guitar, just in case I decided to learn his language. He was my first teacher, his mother, my muse. Heaven and earth adore him. When I forget who I am, I remember where I came from, that there was always music in my body that moved my soul before I knew I had one, gave me language before I knew to speak, gave me psalms before I learned to pray, angels bow before him. In my every poem, there is a piano clawing herself into a piece of my freedom. I am gospel and fire, warrior and song, poem and blood, burden and joy, black and white keys that braid themselves into gray, dust, heaven and earth adore him. When I forget who I am, I remember Remember that God breathed into nostrils, breath into bone until it learned it had a spine and walked. What a mighty God we serve. All right. Um, I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to keep it going. Um, so like I said, if you just tuned in, I'm really just trying to honor the women in my family um, in this space, in this session, um, and just pay honor to, I guess, to all of us too in our blackness. But um I think one of the things that triggered me so much about um, Chadwick Bozeman's passing, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of it triggered me, but I think one of the things was that um, he passed from cancer so young and my mother was around the same age when she was um, both diagnosed and when she passed. And so, um, so I, I wrote this poem about my mother's hair growing back. And that's really what I wanted to uh, talk about. So it's called When My Mother's Hair Grew Back. When my mother's hair grew back, all she wanted was to wear a ponytail. 
Her hair, a thick wavy block of black ocean floating around her face. When she was younger, she never had flowing hair, always wore short haircut or a fro, the same shade as the night sky. When chemo chewed away her hair, we laughed about how curly it would be when her hair returned. And when it came back, it grew back with a vengeance, a force, a reminder that it would be there to stay. No one would ever take its life away again. One of my fondest memories is braiding my mother's hair, giving her flat twists or cornrows, dyeing away all the gray and pulling it straight back into a ponytail. Her hair plaited so thick into my memory like a braid. Thoughts pulled back so straight, our moments together, dangling like hair blowing in the wind. When her hair grew back, she knew it would not grow back the same. Nothing ever does. Once it has been pulled from the root, eroded from the inside out due to what harvested in your veins, just like a memory, they never return the same. They never grow in the same exact direction. They get tangled and float out into the sky however they want to, but just like my hands, running through my mother's scalp so carefully, making parts, every strand braids into the other just the same, no matter how different, no matter what tried to destroy it, no matter what tried to erase it, it from its roots, it grows back. All right, um, okay. So I'm gonna uh, move into this piece. Um, we didn't really have a summer. I don't feel like we had a summer. I don't know. So I've been writing this. Uh, I was writing this piece. Um, it's called Summer Morning. It's a play on morning, of course. Um, but just the idea that we didn't have a summer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do the poem just because I don't know. I feel like it's kind of fun. Maybe. Hopefully, you guys think it's kind of fun. I don't know. I have heard you may not come, that your limbs might not push up tulips into the earth's mouth. I miss you like you never left. Windows down, cool breeze slicing through our hair, careening through festivals, stages, all the stages built for us to remind the world while we spend so much time molding our thoughts onto paper, walks at midnight, sunset the color of my granny's cheeks, my big cousin's bright nails, as she would run outside to meet her boyfriend Dwight and his friends when we were young. They used to fill up water guns and do drive-bys, chase us around the neighborhood, switch up cars just to catch us off guard, like the year we ran around blasting Donnell Jones's track. This is for my players in the hood. It's just an ordinary day. That was the summer Troy was killed, right on the corner, three houses down. One house down from us was a crack polluted garden. And to the other side, the guy who sold them. Our sun-filled days were spent over my auntie's place. Bike rides through the park and random strolls to the corner store. Dairy Queen trips were always a must. Just so we could clown Dom for getting cherry Mr. Misty's instead of ice cream. As my limbs grew longer, it was buying the cutest crop top and wearing it to the mall so I could give my number to a cute guy. And by the next cutest crop top for the next weekend, skating or movies, a date night with my friends. My mama was still alive back then, and I always kept one night of the weekend just for the two of us. Oh, Summer, I heard you might not come. I miss your nights, thick like blackberry molasses, one of the things that never change. I kept that song in constant rotation, like a Ferris wheel, my mother's favorite dream, the year my little cousin was born. The same was right, was the summer right before my mother flew into eternity. Sometimes I would catch that little baby gazing above my head and giggling as if an angel was floating above, making her laugh. Babies are so close to heaven. It's as if they can see the earth melt into the sun before she buries herself into a moonlit plum sky. Summer, I hope you come back to us. We need your memories to remind us we have once lived and are still alive. All right. Um, so <laughs> this poem is a little bit more reminiscent. It is, um, it's a sustina. So it's written, um, there's a lot of repetition in the lines, but you'll catch it. Um, but it's called a sustina for the scars. And it, it starts, um, it starts with a quote from a song. It's called, every wound is a scar. They're all over me. And it's a sustina, sustina for the scars. Houses will always be on fire in the night. Emergency button above my head in the peach bedroom. There will always be dreams of caskets. People swarming a land I do not care to know. Bullets that fly through glass for bodies to find. Stray as someone's lost pet unleashed. 
When the anger of the streets is unleashed, a riot can be found in the mouth of the night, left for the children of broken bodies to find. Every tree has fallen fruit, smooth skin of peach or pear, plum, as the blood that flows for all to know. Sometimes we are picking out our own caskets. My mother's burden was an open casket, perched for daughters before adulthood unleashed. We knew that there would always be more to know, unafraid of darkness that appeared in the night, her favorite color was always a shade of peach, a shade of sunset that she hoped we'd never find. My daddy's guns, we'd hoped to never find. All the bodies in the streets, too many young caskets. L got shot in his mother's face, flushed peach, a rage inside our entire neighborhood unleashed. Nell was killed in the middle of the night. Too many young bodies for my body to know. We all have open wounds to the bodies we know. Who shot my grandmother, we will never find. My prayers search for her in the middle of the night. I wear her spirit, even when my body is a casket, her blood inside me is a siren unleashed. The husband who turned my face peach looks like the man who turned her face peach. Fisted men who only resort to what they know, their anger, a generational curse unleashed. History repeats it's herself in all the blood we find. Prayers fall when we open our mouths like caskets, bruises shaped like bodies carving us in the night. Peach fruit falling slowly for me to find, know how to keep myself from becoming a casket, unleashed like a mouth catching fire in the night all right so i'm gonna move into um something a little bit different but this is um this is the moment where i get to pay tribute to uh the man who put this all together his name is scott woods uh so if you're out there y'all can give it up for for scott woods um he is, as we know, he's more than just a, a poet, but a true pioneer who um, not only uses his voice to speak to us, but uplifts the voices of others. If it wasn't for him, this platform wouldn't be, we wouldn't be doing this right now. So I'm so grateful, um, but not just this, but this holler, the first Rhapsody and Refrain and so many other things. So he's a poet, um, he's a pioneer, uh, he's a founder, he's a director, he's an essayist, and he's been a great mentor to so many of us, including myself. So I'm gonna read something from uh, the Columbus Anthology, which was published recently. And he has an essay in it where he is addressing black creatives in the city and it's called Art in a city that can kill you. And I'm going to read just a segment of that um, piece. We are a valuable people. Sure, all lives matter, but we bring things that other people and institutions find valuable beyond our lives. You can hear the import they place on those things every day. See it in how others treat what we create, represent, and provide above and beyond the offerings of others. They love our music our art, our fashion, our language, our bodies, our abilities. At the same time, they fear our presence, our knowing looks, our potential, our language, our bodies, our abilities. What we provide is valuable in a literal sense as well. It is no coincidence that when it comes to sell Columbus to the world, we are frequently held up to the seal the deal. Look how diverse we are, the billboards suggest. Look how much culture we possess. What we generate frequently without the aid of tax dollars is oftentimes the very key to a city's ability to unlock more tax dollars, which every developing city needs. For all of these reasons, black artists need to decide if Columbus is worthy of our efforts. We need to decide if we will remain satisfied to make statements in our art or if other types of statements need to be delivered, other actions taken. We need to make those decisions individually and when possible and sound collectively. We need to decide if our goal is to point fingers or to lift hands. We need to decide if we're willing to keep giving the best of ourselves to the worst of our opposition. If we're going to continue to resign ourselves to being gentrified out of the city, ignored by 90% of the politicians we install, dismayed at the way our schools treat our children, terrorized by a police state and living off the scraps of the in the know, the hip and the well-meaning. Does a city deserve to not only take credit, but benefit in key ways from the efforts of the artists it maligns when they aren't being artists? And sometimes when they are, how much of the culture we generate does Columbus get to take credit for beyond being a well of inspiration of the worst kind? Do people assume we enjoy painting our conditions, creating poetry about our collective demise and choreographing our oppression? Is the nature poem ever beyond the can of our poets? Must our rappers never find love in their bars? We have conversations to have, and then we have decisions to make. 
Art is always at the front line of change. The question I place before you now is who gets to benefit from the changes we are making? That is Scott Wood, y'all. Bars, bars. So like if you get the opportunity to read this full essay uh, on the Columbus Anthology, Scott Wood's essay, please do um, pick it up. It's a, it's a great read. So uh, in conversation with that, I'm going to do this poem that is, um, you know, I guess in celebration of blackness and all that we are. It's called Magic Before Before Magic. We have been called magic before. Our eyes, subtle stillness, dancing through the branches of our bodies, our bodies, tree limbs, reaching towards the heavens, above the sun, above the rain, dance, rivering us out of our bones. We have been called magic before, swinging from trees until we became them, bearing the fruit of someone else's child, nursing someone else's child while ours lay hanging, its body a box of bones. We're forced to carry six feet beneath our chest so we dig deep inside our bodies and pull out every ounce of glitter prayer glistening until it reaches our tongues and we learn to speak life over ourselves. We have been this magic before, bursting into everyone else's box of glitter and shine and hiding the fact that we birthed it. It came from our womb. We lay bruised and bloody while they dance into midnight until they become the stars we own. We do own the stars, you know. We have been that magic before. How else could you find something to wish upon in the shade of midnight if it didn't already come soaked in our skin shade of brilliance? We have been this magic before, teaching the moon to dance and bend her dust into the shape of an eye, peering out onto everyone's breath while they lay asleep to make sure they keep breathing through every ounce of night that the lives like my magic is so black she looked in the mirror and called herself solar system my magic is so black the stardust grew herself a fro braided her body in the cornrows i said my magic is so black she bounced her reflection off the ocean and the waves started sea walking my magic is so black her midnight's blues mistook her throat for hip-hop and jazz and poetry and mystery and religion and art and culture and culture and culture and everything stolen from her body's magic in the first place where culture was ripped from our veins. We learned to river ourselves into a chandelier of cardinals taking flight, cutting the sky into red until everyone learned how to bleed the rhythm of this nation. We are the rhythm of this nation in all its black and brownness. Yo, black history is American history and America does not exist without this hue of sand and wood and tornado and casket we have learned to carve the caskets from our own bodies and sing a new song louder carve the caskets from our own throats and bloom a new tongue louder and there's always a new tongue to be bloomed and we have always been this magic we have been called this wishbone and golden before but when they forget our names and they will because they do often every ounce of glitter left within our bodies will rise into a new body and throat and tongue until we braid ourselves into a new language again and rewrite history again and all that magic y'all and rise and rise and rise. All right. Um, I'm going to keep it going. I only got a few more poems for y'all, but I'm so thankful that y'all been rocking with me. This is super exciting. So I'm going to read this poem. This like a, a love poem. It's called Love the Black. Um, and it's a contrapuntal piece. Um, so it's in two columns. But together it makes a poem so i'm going to read one column then i'm going to read the other column and then i'm going to read them together love the black they keep saying he's out there a love to unravel inside of a tall dark and handsome a black man to hold to love me back into this skin to remind me to fight to exist as black and bold in a world that wants nothing more than to break you going to make it home tonight before the street lights burn into another tomorrow. One of them for every single one of us and they keep killing them? Gone too soon, fatherless children, motherless sons, chalk outlines swirling in streets, sirens scream, closed caskets, black bodies burning into smoke. They keep saying he's going to make it home out there. A love tonight before the street lights to unravel inside of, burn into another tomorrow. A tall, dark, and handsome one of them. A black man to hold for every single one of us to love me back and they keep killing them? Into this skin, gone too soon. To remind me, fatherless children, motherless, to fight sons, chalk outlines swirling, to exist as black and bold in streets, sirens scream in a world that wants closed caskets, nothing more black bodies burning to break you into smoke all right i'm looking at the time and it looks like um i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna read this poem and then maybe i'll i'll read one more to close um yeah so this is a poem um called watch your mouth when you know the power of your mouth you watch your words 
speak life to dead bones, Ezekiel, make these dry bones live. My life has been a slingshot stretched so far back. I thought it was completely over, but God turned a catastrophe into a catapult, a massacre into a miracle, every broken bone into a bridge over waters troubled and triumphant. I learned to walk on it with a tongue made of flames and a Nazarene name made in their image out the den of lions pulled from what tried to consume me. Let these dry bones live. When you know the power of your mouth, you're more careful with your words. Scripture in my throat, a scroll unraveling from my rib cage. I came to breathe life to the darkness, cause these dead bodies to rise. And sometimes that means my own. Um, and I'm gonna, um, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to do this poem. Um, it's called a uh, long line and it really is in honor of um, the women who I love, the women who are my family, the women who have come before me. I come from a long line of strong women who know how to birth and load rifles all at the same time, who juggle babies and careers and swallowed whole every man that ever learned to raise his fist i think a fist i think a woman the unclenched skin of a toothless hand when he opened his hand and showed me her teeth i remember the powerlessness my throat a voiceless song i remember the wedding day how somehow missus made it feel like woman and then the surgery right in the house i was thrown out of the bruises the bloom on my body in the morning when i say I come from a long line of strong women. I mean, I come from fire breathers, which means I come from dragons, which means I come from beings that slay. There is no gun to erase you here. These are not daddy issues, not my brokenness. Yo, this is a fist, slice through the sky, middle finger and ring finger all side by side. When I say I come from a long line of strong women, I mean, I died a thousand times, y'all, and I always come back. All right, y'all. Um, I just want to thank y'all so much for being here. Thanks so much for uh, spending time with me. I do want to leave us um, with this quote that is uh, from Chadwick Boseman. And he was he was quoting, I think, um, Irma uh, um, Bombeck, I think is her last name. Bombeck is her last name. But um, that's what he was quoting. So it is, um, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say, I used everything you gave me. Uh, that's Chadwick Boseman uh, quoting Irma Bombeck. And um, I believe that that's something that we can truly live in and live out. And that is my prayer for not only myself, but also for all of you. So thank y'all so much for being here. Thank y'all so much for sharing your time, your space and your energy with me. Um, I hope that uh, it was a blessing because y'all were definitely a blessing to me. So uh, have a wonderful night and stay tuned for the rest of this month because there's some hot poets uh, coming through later. All right. Take care. Be blessed.